Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry, trying to deal with a rat problem. Hang on. Got him. <laughs> Anyways, guys, welcome back. And this is my newest weapon, the spear. Now, why am I happy about this weapon? I always wanted a spear. I never actually acquired one and stepped for my father's walking stick. Which, let's be honest, is more of like a defense weapon. This, though, is an offensive and defensive weapon. <laughs> now, this type of spear in history books is labeled as a boar spear or a wing spear. Why is it labeled that? Well, there you look. It's because of these two wings. And these were technically used by Vikings. Now, before you all start saying, Oh, Tempod, these were meant for throwing? No. These were not meant for throwing. This is a defensive weapon. In other words, I had to use this spear to keep my opponent at bay. In other words, I had to keep him back while I'm holding a shield wall formation. In fact, this is technically the type of spear that would be seen at, say, the Battle of Normandy, for example, when Norman knights came in with their horses and thrusted this into their opponent. Now, though, this is going to take some while, and due to this heavy weight to the back end, it's going to cause some problems. So, why are these weapons so dangerous? Well, it's kind of effectively understandable, really. Now, um, sometimes, though, they were uh, implanted with a butt spike. This one wasn't. This is from Cold Steel. Um, not my biggest fan when it comes to historical accurate weaponry, due to the fact they're kind of not that good at it. No offense, guys, but kind of... Eh, well, put too much weight in one general vicinity. Now, this weapon is also perfect for two meter long sword use. How so? Well, Germans and Celtic warriors used spears as a two meter long sword if they didn't have a real sword. In other words, just imagine this whizzing right by your head. <laughs> and in fact, the best part is, the Celtic warrior could easily use this weapon, especially if he had his shield. This thing is just way too large for the camera. Oh man, I hope I don't damage my wall in the back. But yes, I can easily thrust. I can easily cut somewhat. But the thing is, uh, due to its heavy weight, I still gotta get used to it. And unfortunately, that doesn't help out so well with old injuries. Now, I am informed why the butt spike would have been placed on the bottom. It's because if you're killing off your opponent, you can easily use the spike to actually ram it into their face. Which is probably why we get the whole misconception thinking that we can easily do this with a spear. And in truth, because if I was to do that, yeah, we see, but that's not gonna work. So yeah, the butt spike would have been that, not the spear itself. But this weapon is also can be used as a frontal pike formation. In other words. I hold this in a pipe formation, I can easily stop a cavalry charge. <laughs> Which, this weapon in general, if you get like loads of these guys, this step in type of weapon is extremely dangerous. And these types of spears, um, in history, were still being used. From how long? Well, from the late Bronze Age, up until said, uh, well, the Renaissance, in which these effective weapons were also used as personal guard weapons. How so? Well, it's kind of like this. Imagine seeing this weapon coming right at you. I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Now, you can also use these wing these winged pieces on the end as, well, let me see if I can get that in frame. Uh, you could use these as actually, uh, sometimes I've here heard that they would actually have been sharpened to the extent that it would look, look almost like a spike. That way, you can actually just, well, I guess we can all already know what's going to happen. You can easily force him into some guy's neck, his leg. You can actually get it into his unprotected regions. And the thing is, I can even use it to hook an opponent's foot, pieces of metal on him. And the worst thing is, I can even use this on weapons itself. I can pull down an opponent's spear and then thrust in. That's the thing about these weapons and why they're so effective. Now, I hear you already. Temple, are you going to be buried with this weapon too? Um, no. Due to the factorial reason, uh, probably because it's too damn big. And even if I did take off the spear itself, it's still so tall that it's actually about this height here, of which I don't even know if they're going to be able to fit in the coffin. So, yeah. <laughs>
Uh, now, it, instead of like normal historical accuracy, you have to have this one screwed in. Of which you all can do if you want, be my guest, uh, or don't, because in historical standards it's actually stated they might have not screwed these in. Why? Well, just in case you lost your spear, you don't want your opponent to get it at, use the weapon at you. And the thing is, then I can actually even rush forward and actually use this as a, well, a small knife. Now, the thing is, this is a very dangerous weapon and it was already came in sharp. So, I hear you already. Templar, why aren't you doing uh, bottle cut videos? And as soon as I can, that's the problem. <laughs> In which I'm trying not to hit my own fan. <laughs> which is made my point. Now, I still gotta get the stand working and such. Now, it does actually have this type of weird sticky substance or stick sticker substance right here. This is probably where you can actually get a better point of balance for a thrust. Which, I can see why. Especially if I'm behind the shield and I can easily just thrust. See? How easy that is? So yeah, I can see why the Roman legionnaires might have actually um, done this in the late Roman Empire. They would actually uh, colorized their grip handling areas. So that way you have a better way of fighting. So yeah. Still an effective weapon, only this one, if you're going to do it like this. Oh, this is mostly just meant to stand your ground, in other words, for um, like cavalry charge or something. But if it comes to rail on coming fight, you got to use it to this, well, type of distance. That way, I can easily get a thrust, I can easily get a stab, I can easily also get a cut. Now, well, that's going to be a while before I can get that injury fixed. Oh, but yeah. But yeah, guys, I will be leaving a link down below for y'all, that way y'all can buy something like this. Personally, my favorite type of spear in history would actually be a Celtic Flama Luta, Le, Le Ten Spearhead, and which is more of like a wave-like pattern, for both best for thrusting and cutting. But I'll have to get that some other time. But anyways, y'all, have a good day, like and subscribe, also click that bell button, and as well, also check us out on the Facebook area for the page. That way you all can see more information about this weapon. Anyways, guys, see you later.